Here's the funny thing about people. We all like to look good. To make a good impression. To show everyone else we have it all together. Even though none of us do. The only way to pull this off is to put something else on. And that something is called a mask. A mask can help you get a job. I have over 12 years of consumer electronics experience. Playing video games in my parents' basement. It can make you look smarter. Organizational energies to maximize corporation synergy. I have no idea what I'm saying. You do not look fat in those jeans. So that's why they call it a muffin top. We all wear masks from time to time, but the craziest place we put them on is in church. Hello, brother! Amen! Greetings to you on this day that the Lord has made. Something about it makes us want to look our best. I'm fine! Sound our best. He hath blessedeth me so verily. And make like everything is perfect. Things are great! But behind every perfect mask is a perfectly messed up life. People with hearts that are empty. Confused, addicted, hopeless, helpless, and hurting. People who think... But here's the thing. This is exactly the kind of life where God shows up. Messes are his specialty. The one thing God can't work with is a mask. So around here, we have a saying. It's okay to not be okay. Nobody's perfect. But grace is available. We believe God doesn't love us if or because. He loves us anyway. We all like to look good to others. We like to make a good impression. But when it comes to God, the best impression we can make is to just be you. What's up, Mountain Movers Church? Good morning, everybody. Woohoo! Who's here? Let me hear from you. All right. I'm glad you're a lively crowd this morning. So we did, we did start this series last week, Masked. And last week we talked about how uh, many times when we get beneath the surface of our soul, uh, we realize that there's some things that God is wanting to uncover. There's some things that he's wanting to expose. There's some things that he's wanting to deal with. But a lot of times we, we really just get comfortable wearing this mask with God and not admitting that we've got junk in the trunk, that we've got a mess to address, so we've got stuff that really we need to deal with. We, we don't like it when God messes with what is comfortable to us. But we also learned in that message that when we learn to remove the mask, like Moses did in God's presence, that we can become like solar panels in his presence where his radiant glory shines on us when we get in his word. And we begin to hear truths uh, about ourselves when we get in God's house and God's presence like this morning and you get into worship and you get into God's presence. There's things that he downloads to you. There's things that he shows you about yourself that he wants to deal with, things he, in ways he's wanting to stretch you and make you better. But a lot of times we go to God with that mask and he's saying, if you just remove it, then I'm going to shine on you. And when you walk out that door, when you get up from your word on a Monday morning, Tuesday morning, and you go to work, What's going to happen is, in the same way it happened to Moses, is when Moses got around God's people and he had the mask off, that radiant glory from God, it made people feel uncomfortable. And, and here's why. Because the gospel, the, the message of hope, the message of transformation is a message of change. And we don't like change. We don't like transformation because it's uncomfortable and it's inconvenient. And when we hear the gospel being taught or preached or we read it, we get uncomfortable and we don't want to experience that life change. And so when we get around people that we know and we're not wearing this mask and we've spent adequate time in God's presence, they should be uncomfortable. And the reality is that if people are not uncomfortable a little bit around you, you probably have not been in God's presence enough. You probably haven't spent enough time in God's word. You probably haven't spent enough time in worship. In fact, you're probably wearing a mask with people if you're not making them a little uncomfortable because the word of God is extremely uncomfortable. There's not a time that I get into God's word that I'm not made to feel extremely uncomfortable because you are addressing my mess. 
But that's a good thing. And we're going to talk about that today as we deal with getting real with ourselves. It's going to be a good message. All right, you guys ready for today's word? No, that was horrible. That was really, really, really bad. So I'm going to try it again because because God is a God of grace. I'm going to give you a second chance. How many of you guys are ready for the word of God? That is much, much better. I'm going to get right into the text today as we bring you today's message, Getting Real With Yourself. Well, let's turn to James chapter 1. We're going to look at verses 19 through 25. And it goes like this. Understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Human anger does not produce the righteousness God desires. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts. For it has the power, say power, power. to save your souls. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're only fooling yourselves. For if you listen to the word and don't obey, it's like glancing at your face in a mirror. You see yourself, you walk away, and forget what you look like. But if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. Let's pray. Father, We pray right now, God, that you would just open us up, reveal to us the truth about your word and the truth about ourselves. Help us today to get real with ourselves, to embrace the life change that you have for us. In Jesus' name, everybody said. Amen. 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 All right. Well, today we are going to take this passage and we are going to tear it apart verse by verse, because it is chucked full and powerful of life-changing application, all right? So if you'll go to verse 19, and if you have your word, I would say open it up, all right? Grab a pen, grab a highlighter. If you're using your, your word, your, um, what is it, your phone, your U version, you can take notes. My mom, my teenagers, I'm like, they all have regular Bibles. I call them real Bibles, you know what I'm saying? As if you version is fake. It's not fake, but they're like, Mom, we like it on our phones. I'm like, all right, that's fine. So whatever you're using, you can make some notes. Check this out, verse 19. Let's go back where it says this. You must. Everybody say must. Let's just pause for a second, all right? You must. Now, answer me this question. Is that a suggestion or a command? It's a command. All right, so if you're a parent and you're one of those kind of parents like I am, when I tell my kids something that is a must, when I come back home, I expect it to be done, right? So when this, is, when this scripture was laid out, James is telling us God's heart. He's saying, you must. He's not saying, hey, this is a good idea. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something good you could do. No, 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 no. He is saying, this is something you must do. And then the next word says, all. So who does that apply to? Every one of us, all right? So nobody gets a free pass, okay? Nobody gets to skip. It says you must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Now, at face value, we look at this, and we think this is a relationship scripture because a lot of times we teach this when we talk about relationships. Hey, listen, You should really slow down. You should listen when people talk. You should be slow with your response. And and don't lose your cool, okay? And that's all great. That's really good in relationships. But when you actually study the context of why James wrote this, it wasn't in regards to relationships. It was actually in regards to hearing God's word, okay? So I want you to understand something because a lot of times we cherry pick scriptures And we take what we like and we're like, yeah, that's a great one. But you need to understand the context. So he's saying, when you hear the word of God, we are to be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. And here's what's interesting. Some of you this morning, I just want to ask you this question. It's rhetorical. Don't answer out loud. You might embarrass yourself. But why are you here? Now, when Brad and I, we planted this church, started with one couple on our, on our couch, and then we rolled Come into that little on. farmhouse back there. you got to be kidding me. This is just a bonus for this a second. This is just okay. so not in the notes. This is so fun. So 
when we we did everything in the very beginning because you didn't have anybody, okay? So one day we are greeting. I'm looking so right? forward to point two. That's okay, me. good deal. So Brad opens the door to somebody, and it was an hour early. So, it, uh, okay, in Brad's defense, it was a little bit awkward because, like, we only have, like, seven people that attend this church, six of which is my kids, you know, whatever. And they're here an hour early, so Brad opens the door. He tries to make some conversation, but he was so confused. And in my defense, he had no personality. He didn't have a person. He was, Zero. He was not blessed have with Have you person. ever talked to somebody and it's just this? And there's, like, one-word responses? Yeah. He's like, I think I know you. Nope. Okay. Finally, he comes like, down. Like, throw me a bone here. Tell the story. Thank you. I'm like, okay, just go, whatever. All right, so Brad finally comes out with the question, and he says, why are you here? All right, not what our greeters should be saying, but this is really what he asked the kid, and the kid explained how he got invited, whatever. But we've made fun of Brad ever since. But this morning, I really am asking you, why are you here? Did you lose a bet? Did somebody keep leaving one of those invite cards on your desk? And so you're like, hey, look, if you... If I go one time, will you just leave me just alone? Shut up. Maybe your spouse just, just drug you here this morning. Maybe you're thinking somehow in your mind that like if you come, you're going to get like a brownie point in heaven. When you get there, you're going to have all these brownie points for all the Sundays you attended. Why are you here? Maybe you're here this morning because you're going through something. And you need some encouragement. Maybe you're here because you want to be inspired by the word and you want some growth in your life. Maybe you're here because you're ready for God to open you up and begin to do an operation and bring about some life change. But let me tell you, regardless of where you are in your journey, when the word of God is open, you need to understand that the word of God is not just a book. The word of God is not just a book that has sold more copies than any other book ever written in the history of humanity, but this book is active and it's powerful. But listen to me, it's only active and it's only powerful if it's actually applied. You see, a lot of us have these things in our houses and we have them laying around and maybe we've got them even open and highlighted to a real good verse. So that if somebody comes over, we look like real good people. You know what I'm saying? It's like John 3.16 is open, highlighted in yellow. Like we are good people, Jeremiah right? 29 so, Jeremiah 29 11. Jeremiah 29 and 11. Come on now. Right? But here's the thing. If I have a treadmill in my bedroom, but I never actually get my butt on the treadmill, what good does it actually do me if it's a clothes rack? And you know what? Move your toes because some of us, man, I had one in my house forever. You know what I did? Often, I hung the wet shirts on that rack to dry. Finally, I told Brad, get the treadmill out of my house. We're getting a gym membership, and I will get up every day, and we will go. And guess what? We work out five days a week. Why? Because we had to give it. It was too comfortable. But a lot of us, we're comfortable with this beautiful book in our home, but we don't actually apply it to our life. You see, it's powerful if applied. Look at this verse in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. Verses 12 and 13, it says this, for the word of God is alive. Say alive. It is alive and it is powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes. Say exposes. Think about that word, exposes. Sounds like something we want to keep tucked away, right? It says it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Nothing in all of creation is hidden from God. Everything is naked and exposed before his eyes. He is the one to whom we are accountable. In this series, Mask, we're talking about getting real with ourselves. You see, when you open the word of God, it begins to expose to you and to me our thoughts, our desires. The Bible says that it is our desires that draw us away And cause us to sin. So the word of God begins to expose that to us. So that we can begin to bring about change. Now go back with me. Back to verse 20. In our passage. Or 21 actually. I'm going to jump ahead. Pause right there. Actually go back. Sorry. You guys are laughing. I do almost everything I do from memory. So I failed right there. (laughs) All right, We got to go back to look. We were talking about the three things that were in that verse. Be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. Let's talk for a second about being quick to listen to the powerful word of God. What does it actually mean to be quick to listen? Here's what it means. Ready to listen. Prepared and expecting 
to hear and receive a revelation from God. How many of you, again, rhetorical, you actually came today, for whatever reason you came, how many of you actually came ready to receive the word? How many of you actually came into this place today prepared and expecting that there would be a word go forth that could bring about life change to you? I'll tell you that it's really easy to get in the habit of something, especially if you've been serving God for a number of years. You kind of get into this habit. I mean, Sunday morning, it's just just what you do. You get up, that alarm goes off, you get your family together, you show up here, you're like, thank God for Folgers, you know what I'm saying, some good coffee, get me going with some caffeine, I'll grab myself a donut, I roll on into worship. I'm really hoping that the worship team is on point, but you know what, dude, that's a little bit loud today. You know what I'm thinking, I'm going to grab some earplugs. You know what I'm saying? We're all distracted. We're thinking about what's happening after service this afternoon, what I got to get done. We're figuring our budget when they're talking about tithe. We're like, no, I can't do that today. You know what I'm saying? It's really easy to get distracted. It's really easy to be here physically, but our brains are elsewhere. Did you come in ready today because the most powerful word was getting ready to go forth that could actually bring about change regardless of where you are on your journey with Christ. To be quick to listen is to be prepared and expect that you're going to hear a revelation for God. I think oftentimes when I read this, I think about labor pains. I think about giving birth, all right? And here's why. When you find out you're expecting, and some of you guys in this room, you are. We got a lot of babies being born in the fall this year. (laughs) That's why that new nursery is getting ready to open up. When you are expecting, you start to Prepare, because there's no going back. So you start buying everything you need. You start setting up that nursery until that day gets a little closer. And about the last six weeks, you start realizing, boy, this could be any day. You start expecting that this baby could show up. For me, my first child, AJ, came three weeks early, and every day I was like having contractions. I'm thinking it could be today. It could be today. It could be today. I came expecting, and then the day came where I went into the hospital, and I knew in my mind I was terrified. I knew this was going to be the most painful thing I had ever experienced, but... I expected the pain, and I expected life change. Why? Because having a baby, when you've never had a baby, and you've just been a a couple with no kids, that is major life change. We rolled into that hospital knowing when we leave here, life will be different forever. And it was. But you know what? I'll never forget. When he started to talk. Yes. And then we were like, oh. Yes. At first it was cute. Then he would never shut up. And he's 17. He still hasn't learned hey, to shut up. He was one of those smart babies. Started talking at 10 months. You're like, we I'm thought so it was cute. proud of you. Now I'm like, son, oh, there man. is a time to be quiet. Just you know it. what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I was there, I remember expecting that when I make it through this pain, when I make it through this pain, the most incredible joy is going to happen in our lives as they lay this gift that God gave us into my arms, and we get to raise him to live for God. We get to raise him. You see, when we hear the word of God, we have an opportunity to say, you know what, I know this is going to be painful at times. There are things that are going to get underneath and mess with me. There are things that I do not line up with the word of God. And what we like to do is we like to pull out the promises. God will never leave me, and God will never forsake me, and God's going to meet all of my needs, and we start pulling on the promises. But then when we start reading those scriptures, to start messing with where we actually live, we're like, skip. Let's go to the next highlighted verse that I've got. You know what I'm saying? We put the mask on. But God says, listen, be quick to listen. Go to the next one. He says to be slow to speak. What does that actually mean? It means slow to respond to the revelation. So when you start to read and you realize, or heaven forbid we'd be preaching, and you hear something, and you want to just throw out all the excuses as to why that doesn't apply to you. And you think to yourself, oh man, I'm so glad they're speaking on that because that dude over there, he really needs that. You know what I'm saying? It's really quick to say, my spouse, I'm so glad you're talking about honor because they really, they from, need it. You know what here, I'm saying? We love it when we see the rib shot. Right. The wife is always rib shot. He's Bam. like, oh man. And you leave with bruises on your ribs. I mean, she's That's like, right. this is so for you. Right. Are but you hearing this? 
It's really easy to do that. But what that literally means, be slow to speak, is that we are slow to respond. As the word of God goes forth, that we're not just letting it go out in one ear and out the other, but we're actually saying, God, is that for me? God, how do I apply that to my life? Do I just skip right over it? And the final part in that passage says that we would be slow to get angry. You see, what happens oftentimes is when the word of God goes forth or we begin to read it, we actually even get mad at the revelation. We deny it. We don't want to deal with it. We want to skip right over it. But to not get angry is to not be a hothead. But to humbly come before God and say, God, I want to change. I welcome the pain. Because I don't want to walk into this room Sunday after Sunday after Sunday, year after year after year, and walk out of here and be the same. You see, when you go to the gym, if you're one of those people, we love to go to the gym. We go five days a week. But you know what? I don't go to the gym and come home and look in the mirror and think everything changed in one day. Follow me. But I am who I am, and I am in the state of health I am today because I choose to go to the gym day after day after day. And when you walk in here and you give God your best and you prepare your heart and you expect the word of God to come forth for you and you begin to say, God, how can I apply that? Man, that hurts. That really hurts. You see, God knows that there's junk deep down inside of your heart. God knows that you've been holding on to bitterness and unforgiveness and you have honestly pushed it down so far. It happened so many years ago, possibly even while you were a little child. It's affected you your whole life, but you push it down so far. And he says, man, I just want to give you freedom, but you got to get real with yourself. You see, God knows that right now, the grumbling and the complaining you've been doing about the season that you're in, he says, you know what? The season was about to end, but you keep Keep grumbling and complaining. And there's no way I'm bringing you into that next season, that next gift, when you continue to complain. Listen, he says, I know the trials are hard. But if you would just trust me, they would come to an end. But you won't trust me, so I keep letting you cycle like the children of Israel because you just don't get it. God knows where we're living. He knows the address of our mess. He knows the deepest, darkest crevices of our life, and he wants to clean them out. He wants us to take off the mask. He wants us to get real, but it's going to take a decision on our part to be willing to expect the pain, but expect the life change. Will you give God a hand for just a moment? Go on to the next verse. Verse 21, it says this. So get rid of all. Say all. All. There it is again. So get rid of all that is wrong in your life. Holy cow. Are you ever just overwhelmed? How much time do we have? Like, get rid of all that is wrong in my life. I mean, how am I supposed to do that both inside and outside? Listen, do not get overwhelmed. This is called a process. That's why we come on Sunday. And we open our word on Monday. And we open our word on Tuesday. And we come to a life group on Wednesday. And we open our word on Thursday and Friday and Saturday. And we roll back in here on Sunday. And every day we're saying, God, take the chisel and start chiseling off just a little bit on me every single day as I open up the word of God. Because it's a process to get rid of all that is wrong in our lives, both inside and and out. I got to jump in real quick. So you're talking about, we look in the mirror today, just worked out. You don't see the change, but it's what we did yesterday and the day before and the day before and the day before. My dad, um, and I'm going to talk more about this here in just a minute, but, but he got to a point to where he weighed 400 pounds and he had had multiple minor heart attacks and he was going to die. And the doctor said, we're going to do triple bypass open heart surgery, but you are going to have to go on a diet. You're going to have to start working out. So what he did is, you know, he could have looked in the mirror and he could have said, there, there is absolutely no, there is way too much. You said, all, overwhelming. it's overwhelming. All these things that have to change. He could have just looked in the mirror and just given up before he ever started. But you know what he did? He started eating a lot of grilled chicken and salad and some fat-free dressing. That's what he did. 
And then he started going to the gym. And he would, he would walk for 30 minutes. And then he built it up to where he was do, going 45 minutes on the treadmill. And then he'd go to the different machines and he'd do the circuit. And before you knew it, you know what he did? In one year, he lost 200 pounds. Because every day, he just grinded it out. He kept eating salads, kept eating his grilled chicken and fish and, and the, the low-fat right. foods, and he kept going to the gym, and he kept walking, and he kept doing the circuit, right. and he just kept doing it day after day. after. Now, he could have just looked in the mirror and just said, there's no hope. I give up. There's too much mess to address, too much to change. It can't happen all at once. He could have been so, so just overwhelmed that he just gave up. But just one day at a time doing what he knew he needed to do to experience that life change over a period of a year, 200 pounds. And God wants to do the same thing in our spiritual lives every single day. If you'll do what you're supposed to do, if you do what's right, you'll never go wrong. That's right. All right. So it goes on to say this. We got to get rid of all that's wrong in our life. Inside and out, that's process. And it says, humbly, be glad for the wonderful message we have received. You see, the very opposite of being humble is to be prideful. The first and still the greatest sin. Lucifer fell from heaven for what? Pride, right? And so when we hear things, we go, oh, that doesn't apply to me. It's our pride that goes up and say, oh, I don't have an issue with that, right? But deep down, we know, you know what? I need to work on that. We've got to humbly accept the word that goes forth. It says, for it's able to save our souls as it takes a hold of our hearts. Guys, real life change doesn't happen because anyone pushes you. Real life change doesn't happen until it gets a hold of your heart. You see, the only reason, Papa Momo, that's what we call him, the only reason he experienced losing 200 pounds is not because anybody made him, but he made a decision himself. This is what I need to do for me. You got to make that decision spiritually. Verse 22, it says this, it is a message to obey, not just to listen to. Lord, help us. How often do we click on you version and we listen and those few chapters go off and we couldn't even tell you what we heard. We don't know, but we did it. Check mark. And even you version does it for you. Check, 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 and then click. Everybody knows you did your plan for the day. You know what I'm saying? Come on now. It's really easy to do that. But did we actually say, God, what does your word today have to do with me? What are you going to do in my life today with this word? It's not just to listen to it. It's to obey. Because it says if we don't obey it, we're just fooling ourselves. If you're fooling yourself, what are you doing? You're being fake with yourselves. You're not being real with yourself. So what are you really doing? You're wearing a mask, but you're doing it with yourself. You're lying to yourself. You see, God wants to bring about change in our life every single day. Verse 23, for if a person just listens to the word and doesn't obey it, he is like a man looking at his face in a mirror. As soon as he walks away, he can't even see himself anymore or remember what he looks like. Now, this is ludicrous, right? If I go over here and I look in the mirror... I see myself, I know what I look like, and I'll walk away. How ludicrous is it that I would actually forget what I look like? That's insane. This passage is literally saying that a person who hears the word of God, listens to it, stares intently at it, hears the pastor preaching a word, God clearly drops into your spirit. This is something you need to deal with. It's like you're staring into the mirror, and you know what happens when you look into the mirror? You see all the imperfections. Do you not? You see exactly what you need to fix. That's exactly what the Word of God does. Just like the mirror, when you look into the Word of God, it shows us exactly what we need to fix. And I want to take it a step further. If you have dim lighting in your bathroom, you can get ready and you can think I'm doing pretty good. Like I'm not, you know, the aging process, I'm doing pretty good right now. I'm not looking too bad, right? I get ready and I'll be honest, my bathroom lights are horrible. Like we're getting ready to remodel because it's terrible. And so I can get ready in my bathroom and then I jump in one of our vehicles and I throw down the visor just to make sure everything's good. I'm the like, sun good God, beams. what happened to you? The sun will beam. I'm like, oh my gosh. Mascara on you know the forehead. what I'm saying? You're like, what is going on? Where did the 
those wrinkles come from? Like, I got to go get some help in here. But like, I was going to say something else. I'm just going to skip it. Sorry. Sometimes, you can't do that Sometimes us. you just filter your thoughts and you go, not today. Nope. We're just going to skip that one. <laughs> But when you hear the word of God, it's that you clearly see what you need to fix. Like I got glitter all over my face from that mask. And you say, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and walk away. I know that God just told me I need to deal with the unforgiveness, but I don't want to deal with it. So I'm going to go ahead. Pastors, pray us out. Can you pray us out fast, please? Let's go. I'm going to put this right back on and I'm going to leave and I'm going to leave the same way I came in. See, God wants us to leave different every day time we come into this room. Let's look at verse 25. It says, but if you look carefully into the perfect law that sets you free, and if you do what it says, and don't forget what you heard, then God will bless you for doing it. All right, those first two words right there, but if, that makes this conditional. The only way that the things that this passage just talked about which is freedom and blessings. The only way freedom and blessings are going to find their way into our lives is if. If what? If we look carefully into the perfect law that sets us free. Now, what this passage is saying is when you look into God's word, when you hear God's word being preached, when you read it for yourself, it's talking about staring at the text. Now, as pastors, you know, we get the privilege every week of bringing you a word from God, we've, we've, on your behalf, we've gone to the Lord and we've said, God, what, what do we as a church family, what do we need to hear right now? What, what do we need to bring to the table as chefs? What kind of food do we need to prepare? What kind of feast do we need to bring to the table so we can eat up and, and feast on the word of God? And when he shows us the text that we're to share, like today's text, he, he allows us to just sit and soak and stare at the text. And then as we stare at it and we ask the Holy Spirit to reveal things, he shows us different perspectives, different angles, different stories, different illustrations. And, and, and parts of the passage just start kind of popping out and he just starts dropping things into our mind, but specifically about ourselves. Before he ever addresses your mess, he addresses our mess first. He messes with us so bad. And he, he gets in our heart, and he gets in our junk, and, and, and we get it first, guys. We're like, we're like you know, if, if you've ever ridden a roller coaster and you sit in the front car, you know, you, 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 get the, you get the first experience. I mean, you experience everything that roller coaster ride has to offer first before anybody else. You are in the front seat, and we get that every week. But we've learned to stare at the text, and that, that text begins to just come to life, and it's powerful, and it changes us. And so I want to challenge you whenever you get into God's word, whenever you hear his word. To not just listen to it. Don't walk away from the mirror and then put your mask back on and forget what you read. Don't, don't forget what God was trying to show you. When you sit in a room like this and you're hearing the word of God being preached, the Holy Spirit, the reason we do worship first is because worship prepares our hearts for the word of God because his presence is our priority. We, we usher in the presence of the Holy Spirit. So right now, literally, the Holy Spirit, God's presence, is sitting next to you with his arm around you. And he's saying, let's look at this word together. Because I've got some things, I love you so much, and I've got some things that I'm wanting to show you that are deep inside of you, that are, that are hidden beneath the surface that I want to deal with. He's got his arm around you, and he's showing you, and these things are popping up in your mind, and some of y'all are just like, mask on, not even making eye contact. He's sitting right next to you, and you're, you're just looking straight ahead, mask on, and you're saying, I am not doing this. I'm not ready to deal with this. I'm not ready to address this mess. But he's saying, if you will just stare at the text, if you will listen to what is being said, if you'll just hear what I'm trying to show you about yourself, I will change you. And here's the two things that you can expect to happen because it's conditional. It says, if you will look carefully into the law of freedom, the law that sets you free, if you do what it says and you don't forget what you heard, then you, God, will bless you for doing it. Listen, we're talking about freedom and blessing. We're talking about when we look into the law of God's word, we're talking about experiencing freedom and we're talking about being blessed. This freedom is about the, you know, the fact that in, in life, man, when we're wearing that mask, we pull behind us. I wish I had a ball and chain as an illustration. I'd just be dragging this, you know, this ball and chain behind me. We pull stuff behind us that's so heavy that we weren't meant to carry. 
We, pull, we lug it around. We carry it with us every day. We carry it to work. We take it to the grocery store. We take it home at night, and we're just, we bring it here on Sunday mornings. Some of y'all came in this morning. You came in with a ball and chain. You just tucked it under your seat, and it's heavy, and it, pull, it weights you down, and God's saying, there's freedom over that. I'll set you free right. if you get into my word. And, and, and in these moments where you say, okay, God, do a work on me, that thousand pound weight comes off your chest, comes off your shoulders. You don't know what freedom is until you get into God's word and you allow that life change to take root. Right. That freedom is liberating. Right. And that word blessed, it means happy. Some of you guys are so miserable wearing your mask. You're, you're so miserable. You are miserable. And you don't even know why. I'm telling you right now. It's because you've got a mask on. It's because you have that mask on. I want to share a story with you about my dad. Recently, you know, he, he, he went in for the triple bypass, open heart surgery in 91. Um, he lost the weight, changed his diet. And then um, they ended up putting a defibrillator in. And if you don't know what that is, so basically any time his heart would get out of rhythm, uh, or if his heart stopped, if he goes into cardiac arrest for any reason, the defibrillator will shock you and bring you back to life. He's had it for about 20 years. And this year, uh, it actually happened. One, one afternoon, he was sitting in his, uh, in his chair at home, and he said everything just went dim. He just blacked out. And when he woke up, he realized that his defibrillator had went off and it, it, it saved his life. It shocked him and brought him back. His heart stopped. And so they scheduled an appointment with the physician, with his cardiologist, and he went in and they ran some reports. And it's so cool. Technology is amazing. They're able to gather data uh, and a history from the defibrillator to see what has happened this last year. And he said, the doctor told him, he said, Mr. Helton, he said, you've actually gone into cardiac arrest three times this year. The other two times were probably in your sleep and you didn't even realize it, but your heart is, is, is out of rhythm. And the defibrillator did its job. It saved you three times. It shocked you, and it brought you back. And he said, but we're going to need to uh, look at a few options. And he said, Mr. Helton, he said, um, the first option is, um, is you can do nothing at all, okay? Um, and just go on as normal. And the second option would be you coming here to the hospital, and we put you under observation, and we watch your heart as we introduce some very highly powerful drugs uh, that, will, that should kick your heart back into the right rhythm. Um, and if that doesn't happen, then we're going to shock you. And we're going to try to get your heart to do what it's supposed to do. So, uh, you know, he thinks about this. Four days in the hospital, possibility of getting shot, going on highly powerful drugs. And he says, um, I go for option one. How about we do nothing, right? <laughs> and he said, well, actually, Mr. Helton, uh, doing nothing, that option one w wasn't actually an option. I just said that because I wanted to give you two options. <laughs> he said it actually wasn't an option because here's what's going to happen if you go with option one. He said, this will happen again. He said, except this time you may be driving your car and you're going to veer off and you're going to hit somebody head on. You're going to kill them and you're going to die. He said, or you'll be walking your dog like you do every day and you're going to pass out and your head's going to hit a rock and you will die. So option one isn't an option. Option two, I highly suggest. How about we do that? And he said, okay, let's do that. <laughs> so, you know, the reality is, is, is you and I, we do the same thing with God's word. Man, we... we we come into God's house, we hear his word being preached, and we get this consultation, right? We get this reality check because the word of God is revealing. It's a mirror. We, we, he shows us exactly where we're at. He shows us exactly what he wants us to deal with. And, and, and for many of us, we walk right out that door and it's mask back on. And it's like, you know, thanks God for the consultation. Thanks for revealing the things that you want to deal with. But I go with option one. How about we do nothing? And the reality is the Holy Spirit is telling you today, if you go out that door and you take my word lightly and you don't embrace the life change that I have for you, things aren't going to get better. Things are going to get worse. Really, really bad, destructive things are going to happen because we take God's word so lightly. When he's saying, I, I, listen, the, the procedure of it all. My dad was scared of being shocked. He was scared of, 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 of taking those drugs. He was scared of the process. And, and we, get, we get so 
scared with the process of, of God getting in our business. And we get scared about the, the life change when, when things come to our attention. And we, we're realizing I've got pride that I've got to deal with. I've, 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 I've got gossip that I've got to deal with. I've got anger issues, lust. You, you go down the list and these things come to your mind and God's trying to reveal these things. But you're, you're saying to yourself, I, I thank you for the consultation, but I don't want to experience the pain that's going to take to live the life change and to be different and live different. But it's so much worth it when you think about it. It's, it, it's, yes, it's painful in the moment. It's, it's painful when God reveals what's going on, on the inside. I love what King David said. He said, search my heart and know me and see if there's anything inside of me, God, that offends you. When's the last time that you said, God, show me what's inside of me that offends you? Show me. We don't want to pray that prayer because we don't want to deal with the pain and the procedure and the process. But listen to me. What's so much greater than all that and makes it so much worth it is the promise. The promise of a freedom that you've never experienced before, the promise of being truly happy because you've allowed God to do heart surgery on you. You've allowed him to open you up. You've allowed him to expose to you the reality of where you're really at. You get real with yourself, and you're like, God, I don't like it, but let's do this. Let's do this because, God, I'd much much rather have the life change than to go out that door and not be any different than the way I came. Let's pray today. Father, we love you, and we pray in Jesus' name, God, that as you've revealed your word to us and as you do each and every week, every time we get into your word, your Holy Spirit reveals these things to us, Father God, of how we can become more like you. I pray that we wouldn't reject the nudging of your spirit in our lives, God. I pray that we would, that we would embrace your promises and that pain that comes with the change so we can become more like you. God, help us to not just take your word seriously, God, but get excited to actually anticipate, to to expect great things. God, when we come into your house and we open our word on a Monday morning, on a Wednesday morning, on a Saturday morning, when we get into your word, let us come expecting, God, that you're going to speak into our lives and you're going to reveal things, God, that we need to change. And as painful as they may be, God, that we would be expecting and excited about the fact that we can be different and we can experience freedom like never before and we can truly learn what happiness looks like. With heads bowed and eyes closed, you're in this room and you say, I, I don't have a real relationship with Jesus. And there's so many things that the Lord has brought to my mind as I've just been hearing you preach today and I'm realizing so clearly that Maybe what I had before was religion or maybe I haven't had a relationship with Jesus at all and I want that. I want heaven as my home. You can do that today by simply admitting like I did years ago. God, I've, I've fallen short of your standard. I've let you down. I've offended you with my life. And just saying, God, forgive me. And believing that Jesus is the Son of God, confessing Him as Lord of your life. And you can experience such incredible freedom and life change today. If that's you, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. If you're watching online, I just want you to type in the comment section below. I'm all in. If you're in this room, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Would you just raise your hand so I know who I'm praying for today? Thank you. Anybody else today? Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else today? Thank you. I see your hand. Anybody else? Come on. Anybody else? Thank you. For those of you that raised your hand, I see your hand over there. Thank you, Father. Well, let's pray this prayer together as a church in support of those that made that decision. I see your hand too. Father, I love you. you. Forgive me me. of offending you. you. Forgive me of my sins. sins. Jesus is the Son of God. God. I confess him as Lord of my life. life. Help me to remove my mask. mask. Show me, God, God. if there's anything anything inside of me me that needs to change. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. If you just prayed that prayer, man, we want to celebrate with you. That is the best decision you will ever make. We have a gift for you. It's called our Next Step Kit. It's in a green bag. On the left, as you exit, pick one up. It's got a brand new Bible that you'll be able to understand. And it's got a message from Brad and I that's going to help you to know how to be successful in this new walk with God. And if you're online, 
Just direct message us your address, and we'll put one in the mail to you in the morning. Guys, will you put your hands together? Seven people in the last two services have given their life to Christ. Hey, thanks for joining us today. We sincerely hope the message impacted your life. Stay connected with us by following us online, or you can find us on Facebook. If you would like to partner with us financially, we have a few easy ways to give. You can text your giving to 77977 and simply type in MMC and follow the prompts. Or you could find us online at www.mountainmoverschurch.org and click the Give Now tab. Or you could simply mail your giving in to 24000 South 660 Road, Grove, Oklahoma 74344. We are a church leading people into a real and life-changing relationship with Jesus Christ that is contagious. We look forward to seeing you next week.